Hello everybody. Today I will discuss about uh, one of the subtopics of the powder processing that is functional parts by additive manufacturing process. So basically I will try to discuss about the additive manufacturing process and how we can make the functional components using the additive manufacturing technology where powder can be used as a raw materials. So here these four topics we will try to some additive manufacturing processes then powder based additive manufacturing processes in general and then functional parts by additive manufacturing process and finally we will discuss about the case studies. So these are the basic um, topics I will try to cover up in this particular lecture. So additive manufacturing you know the additive manufacturing in basically layer by layer deposition process but it is a it is a very controlled way we can perform the layer by layer deposition, pro, uh, deposition and to fab fabricate a three dimensional component. So here it can be considered as a advanced manufacturing processes and uh, we use some feedstock material in any other form not only powder form feedstock material can be in the form of a wire also we can utilize and uh, in this case we starting uh, of this uh, of the design of the component uh, by following a CAD model. So uh, from the CAD model we prepare uh, this CAD model and based on that we can manufacture this particular component over layer by layer deposition part. So this is the basic definition of the uh, additive manufacturing process. Now the standard terminology associated with additive because we use there are so many terminology we can use which is basically analogous to the additive manufacturing process. For example, we use this terminology 3D printing, we use the rapid prototype, we use the direct digital manufacturing, we can use the rapid manufacturing, solid free from fabrication. These are all analogous to the additive manufacturing process. Now if the rapid manufacturing process is basically having the three phases, one is the design of the component, what we can manufacturing design how we can process it and what is the uh, testing phase. So these are the three different phase in any rapid manufacturing process. So we can start with this thing design phase, phase one. Basically first we define the specification. Then based on the specification we can uh, design the CAD model and then we can create from the CAD model we can create the data structure, the data file dot .stl file format usually we can form and here all the data structure which store the instruction to give the any printing machines what way the layer by layer deposition can be performed. So here STL file format is there from the direct CAD file and then basically file transfer to the machine. So which is perform the actual task of the printing of the component. So that is called the post processing in this case. So that is the phase one, uh, one phase and second phase is the manufacturing of the component direct manufacturing. So here we started with the all data file transfer to the data transfer to the machine setup and then machine starts building the uh, component as per the instruction and then uh, certain cases we as per the design and in cases uh, we an undeserved, undesired part of this component is basically is there might be there associated with the component so that undesired part is removed this next part and after that we do perform can post processing maybe for some finishing operation we can perform or some kind of the heat treatment operation can also be performed uh, in, in this case. So that is the phase 2 manufacturing stage and phase 3 is the testing phase. Then we go for the part inspection and the part inspection can be uh, two way the with specification limit so that means within the specific limit is there or not what we started with the component and then outside of the specific limit is there. Uh, if there is outside of the specific limit then we can reject the part or maybe we can calibrate the machine parameter to reach exact the this uh, within the tolerance limit of the manufacture component. If it is within specified limit then we can accept the component. So these are the steps, the basic steps associated with the uh, any additive manufacturing uh, process we observe. Now rapid prototyping or additive manufacturing of metals and alloy the developing field of the additive manufacturing industry. So it is a till it is evolving there are uh, lots of product has been developed till it is going on and because and uh, at the same time this uh, we can utilize further to create the functional parts using this the additive manufacturing system and of course this is a more intricate design of the metallic components is possible to manufacture using the this uh, additive manufacturing uh, techniques. Now there are so many applications of the additive field component. We can find out the application in aerospace industry, medical industry, automotive industry. We can see a few examples for that with the dental hardware. 
we can manufacture using the additive manufacturing process is a medical and dental implant and we can use the uh, serum chest implant also can also be possi possible to manufacture in the additive manufacturing process if you see the engineer structure and materials we see the 3d printed lightweight structure very complex structure can be produced in the lightweight even here you can see the I mean, bridge fabricated by uh, one process also so that is that can also be manufactured engineer structure in automotive industry we can manufacture the titanium bike frame we can see that is a very complex and sometimes the complex structure is if you see from this figure also titanium bike frame the structure is actually very complex now if you want to manufacture using this thing conventional manufacturing process then we have to uh, make the different different parts and then you have to think about how to assembly all uh, all these components so but in additive manufacturing process we can use only one system one manufacturing process we can follow and we can manufacture the whole component so that is the advantage of the additive manufacturing process and as compared to the conventional additive manufacturing process so there very complex component can be greatly designed or manufactured using the additive manufacturing technology even if you see the aerospace industry also they use the uh, copper uh, a rocket nozzle can be used the additive manufacturing technique and maybe we can use the fuel nozzle can also be manufactured using the additive manufacturing processes or I can say the rapid manufacturing processes this all these components can be manufactured of course these components can be manufactured in the conventional manufacturing process but in conventional manufacturing process you need to follow more than one type of the manufacturing process and lots of complexity is there loss of material also there because in conventional manufacturing process we need to perform the machining operation so there is a material loss is there so but in the additive manufacturing in a single sort we can perform the complete component by eliminating the several options or the different types of the manufacturing process or we can eliminate the assembly of the very complex part um, using the additive manufacturing process so here is the advantage now according to ASTM standard the additive manufacturing process ASTM standard means there is very specific as per very specific standard the additive manufacturing technologies can be classified in broad into two categories one is the direct energy deposition or we can say directed energy deposition and power bed fusion uh, technique so these are the two different techniques we can we can find out in, in the additive manufacturing process now further categorization of the additive manufacturing process depends on the heat sources we can utilize how to meld the feedstock material feedstock means the raw material uh, in this case so heat source for the additive manufacturing it can be the gas metal arc so we can simply the arc we can utilize or it, it may be gas metal arc process so based on that we can develop the DET GMA directed energy deposition based gas metal arc welding additive manufacturing process even we can utilize the electron beam so uh, to melt the substance material so based on that both the powder bed fission and directed energy deposition both can be type of techniques can be developed using the electron beam uh, source then we can use the plasma arc also plasma arc usually this directed energy deposition process has been developed we can use the laser also laser both directed energy deposition as well as the powder bed fusion both different types of the technologies has been developed using laser as a heat source so therefore we can see there are lots of variants of the additive manufacturing processes depending upon the type of the heat source we can utilize and we can what we can apply the based on the approach also so one parameter is the heat source what type of the heat source we are utilizing and second parameter what may be the approach whether it is powder bed fusion or whether it is directed energy deposition so based on that all these different variants of the manufacturing process has been developed now if we look powder based additive manufacturing process here powder materials is used as a in terms of the raw materials so we can use the solid powder and then we can join this powder we can consolidated powder uh, uh, we can join it and we can create the functional parts also by mixing the the different types of the powder or maybe the the deposition of the material layer by one layer is the one type of the powder and second layer can be the different types of the powder so this way functional canals functional part can also be manufactured using this powder based additive manufacturing process so here this powder is basically heated and allowed to either melting or fuse together or allowed to perform the sintering operations or it can be this melted either partially or completely or finally using the or uh, which is not used in this case the powder they can act as a the support the structure now 
this basically we use the heat source to bind the powder particles to make a uh, solid component and in this case heat source can be uh, different types of the heat source but usually in powder based technology most of the cases is the electron uh, laser beam we can utilize and maybe electron beam can also be utilized uh, in this cases for the powder based uh, additive manufacturing process. Now here you see that powder based method is basically usual the laser beam can be used, electron beam can be used, even infrared base techniques can be used. But infrared is usually used in for the non-metallic material but for metallic material we use the laser beam and electron beam. Even for the selective laser sintering operation or selective laser melting which are the laser based processes but one cases we can use the partial melting and other cases we can use the full melting of the powder particles. For example, in case of the sintering operation we use the partial melting and in case of the other cases the selective laser melting complete melting of the powders or uh, the substrate material is usually followed. But in contrast electron beam melting can be used but it is a high energy electron beam is basically utilized in this cases to complete the melting process and this is applicable in case of the conductive materials and another advantage is the electron beam melting process because it can be performed under the vacuum. So, in this case the contamination is basically can be minimized or there might not be any contaminated uh, contaminated part or defect associated with the this uh, additive manufacturing component. Now, we can compare comparison of the powder based processes with the other additive manufacturing processes we use the this uh, this for the metallic component use the DED and the powder bed fusion uh, these two methods we can utilize here and we can compare between these two. In, in powder uh, powder use in case of the DED either we can use in the form of a powder the raw material we can use in the form of a wire okay. and powder bed fusion is usually we use the raw material in the form of a powder. Now, you can compare between all these uh, variants we see that in, in terms of the uh, the the heat stroke material so heat stroke material either powder or oil heat source can be laser heat source can be electron beam heat source can be electric or heat source can be laser electron beam so basically in powder bed fusion we can use either laser or electron beam in case of the dd process we can use either electron beam and electric r and in case of wire but in case of the powder we can use the using the laser in case of the directed energy deposition process now, nomenclature means of course the heat source and the type. Heat source whether laser, electron beam or arc and the type means whether we are using the DD process or whether using the powder bed process. So, based on the different names are there. Now, power in case of DD process the when you handling the powder, powder for the DD process it is having 100 to 3000 watt uh, sorry 100 to 3000 uh, 3, yes 3000 watt and it is a in case of the DD process the 500 to 2000 watt in case of the electric R it can be 1, 1 kilowatt to 3 kilowatt in case of laser for the powder bed fusion we use the little lower range of the uh, power 50 to 1, 1 kilowatt and even for the electron beam also we can use the 50 to 1 kilowatt. Maximum build size actually in powder base in the DD process directed energy deposition process this uh, is open uh, directly we are applying the uh, source uh, projecting the powder and uh, the laser source on the substrate. So, uh, in this case there is a the maximum size can be much more but this maximum build size uh, can be uh, limited when you try to perform the all this process under the uh, chamber of a some sealing gas. So, that is why it is having certain uh, limitation and the direct energy deposition even for the uh, electron beam also it depends on the uh, in this case that size of the vacuum chamber electric arc also it open. So, it is the bigger size can be because shielding gas is also applied along with the deposition. So, the size of the components or maximum build size can be can be bigger also. In this case powder bed fusion of course, it depends on the size of the power uh, this bed size. So, which is uh, in case of powder. So, mostly whether laser or electron beam it is a building size can be the same because entirely depends on the size of the uh, in this case size of the chamber in this case. Speed in case of the DD process when you use the laser as a source for 4 to uh, uh, 5 to 20 millimeter per second 
and you can but in case of the in, in case of directed energy deposition but in case of the powder bed fusion the laser speed can be 10 to 1000 millimeter per second even for the electron beam also in the similar range but in case of the electric arc the speed is relatively low 5 to 15 millimeter per second uh, even electron beam in case of the uh, direct energy deposition we can use the very low speed production time for the powder based high but for the wire based is usually low and uh, in case of the powder bit fusion uh, the this the uh, production time is usually high uh, all, all, all these cases so we see that production time when you are handling the powder based system is relatively high but production time in case of the wire based system is relatively uh, low um, all these cases because powder based we try to achieve the very high uh, the surface roughness the very uh, precise components uh, manufacturing of the complex and very precise components that's why the layer thickness is very very small usually in the powder based system and that makes the production time is usually higher but in case of the wear we don't have the that much of control over the layer thickness uh, uh, because it entirely depends on the size of the wear i mean to say the diameter of the wear so therefore it is uh, certain roughness or certain uh, accuracy it uh, able to achieve in case of the wire based technology and in this case the production time is usually low because material the, the deposition rate is relatively high as compared to the powder based technology. Now surface roughness is a laser based system and powder based related to the powder it can be 4 to 10 micrometer uh, even for the wire also for electron beam it is 8 to 15 micrometer but electric arc based technology in this case we needs the machining operation to perform. In case of the powder bed fusion, you see, see the, the surface roughness is 7 to 20 and powder based technology and even electron or laser it is similar range. Dimensional accuracy of the component 1.5 to 1 millimeter, even electron beam 0.1 to 1.5 millimeter in case of the wire, but intricate features are not possible. So, very intricate, very complex features are not possible to achieve in case of the, the arc based technology where electric arc based technology. So, because here material deposition relatively higher, so we cannot control the very intricate part uh, using this uh, process. But in case of the powder based, yes, it is possible and dimensional accuracy is very, very high in case of the powder bed based technology. Post processing, we can see that surface grinding is generally uh, required, but in case of the DD process, in case of the wire based technology, definitely with surface grinding and uh, machining is also required to achieve the better finish. And of course, electric arts machining is essential to allow or to perform to achieve the good uh, dimensionality of the component. And uh, in this case, uh, require the uh, porosity and uh, that um, post processing is required in this case. And in this case, uh, we use uh, this uh, some kind of the uh, finishing operation is uh, necessary uh, in this case to achieve the dimensional accuracy. So, they are we see that uh, overall we can see that we have powder based, we have wire based. So, powder based is more accurate component can be possible to achieve, more complex shapes can be achieved, but on the other side, wire based we cannot produce the more complicated, but where the big structure is required. So, large deposition amount is required in this case wire based technology is better, but very fine structure, very delicate, very complicated structure we need and very small structure we need it. In that case powder based technology is the more appropriate. Now types of the powder, we can use the metal, ceramics and polymers or composites uh, can be utilized uh, in additive manufacturing processes, but the powders are generally can say zero dimensional material, we, we can consider like that, that allow the free fabrication of the diverse products with a complex design which is possible using the uh, powder as a raw material. Now powder based technology additive manufacturing process has several advantage. One is that this uh, almost try to produce the near net shape component. So exactly close to the shape of the component as per the CAD design is possible using the powder because powder size is very very small. Liquid requiring little and no additional processing might not be required associated with the powder process. Then greater manufacturing flexibility compared to the traditional methods. So in that case, we can achieve the uh, flexibility 
compared to the traditional method we can use the in this particular uh, um, this powder based additive manufacturing process ability to fabricate components with the very complex geometries for example honeycomb structure any kind of mesh structure organic shape this type of the shape structure is possible to achieve using the powder uh, based technology and properties can be locally adjusted so it is very easily can be adjusted using the, the, the local properties using the powder based technology by continuously modifying the production process parameter. So, if we change the process parameter for example, deposition rate and uh, this case all uh, the speed of the deposition all can be matters here and we can locally varying the, the component uh, using this uh, powder based technology. So, here it is a rapid manufacturing method. So, therefore, reduce the lead times uh, until the uh, production it is basically reduced lead times is possible the low lead time is possible in this particular case in the powder based technology because we consider this is a rapid manufacturing process. Then powder based manufacturing having the disadvantage or falling issues for example, like other additive manufacturing process the surface quality of the products powder based additive manufacturing process can steer step effect uh, step effect for example we deposited one layer on the this manufacturing the using this powder the next layer uh, can be deposited like this next layer can be deposited like this so this this part we can say as a that uh, the staircase effect is there though it entirely depends on the layer thickness so that is the one problem associated with the powder based technology and therefore we need to perform some kind of the post processing uh, operation to to avoid or to reduce this uh, staircase effect. Second is the process parameters are not precisely controlled. Uh, the high temperature beam can can actually create some kind of the shrinkage, wrapping, oxidation, and finally can lead to the formation of the residual stress. So all this kind of the although these are the problem is associated with the conventional manufacturing process also, but similar kind of the pro problems also exist in case of the additive manufacturing technologies. For example, a residual stress development is there, but of course all these cases, uh, this kind of the defects I can say uh, that uh, can be reduced by proper controlling of the uh, process parameters. Now, if we look into the different variant of the uh, powder based additive manufacturing process usually the common processes are the selective laser sintering, selective laser melting, electron beam melting, binder jetting technology and high speed sintering process. So, here selective laser sintering process is basically we can utilize the CO2 or NDVAC laser this, this type of laser may utilize uh, to melt the powder and of course, the layer by layer deposition is actually done and then the overlying the center solidified layers to create the desired shape. That means one layer is deposited then again next layer is deposited but when the next layer is depositing that it should try to remelt the previous layer. So, that is why this way it is a continuous the layer by layer deposition build up is possible using the in the selective laser sintering process. Now, we start with the using computer some CAD file. So, that means for, for the first we make a, the, the complete three dimensional drawing of the component and then that is called the CAD drawing and we take the data basically we, we determine the what can be the layer thickness and the layer by layer deposit if you perform this virtual uh, component the CAD model the what can be the layer by layer deposition that strategy we can decide beforehand and we can store all the data and that data is basically supply to the printing machines to and it follow according to the path has been instructed using the, the data uh, from the CAD file. So, therefore, we use the precision guide rail and the servo control system that actually direct the laser what way the, the what can be the scanning path uh, for the lasers and to create the 3D contours. So, these are the way. So, here you can get the more um, uh, the selective laser sintering process in details. For example, this is the laser source is there, this is the scanning device and this is the product. So, laser is focused on the layer in this in this case. So, here the powder supply bed is there. So, this is usually we supply the powder and then roller is there, roller is basically decides what can be the thickness we can handle one particular uh, steps. So, over layer over the bed the layer of the powder is there and then we scan the laser 
as per the path which is already decided from the CAD model. So, over the scanning of the path, laser is basically sintering or affecting at this particular path. So, that surrounding uh, powder metals will be affected. So, they will sintering or they can melt also. So, then uh, after solidification, they become solidified and remaining powder uh, stays there that acts as a support to this structure. So, this can be done over layer by layer and once layer is done, we can make the downward of this ram to feed the for the next layer material. So, this one layer is done, then we can feed the next layer and uh, we follow the similar strategy, uh, simply the scanning of the laser as per the design path. So, these are the way we can perform the powder uh, selective laser uh, sintering operation over the uh, powder bed fusion. Now, once the first layer is fused and then uh, we can lowering the layer one layer and the process is basically repeated. This actually SLS selective laser sintering is usually performed for the usually for polymers mostly but of course SLS can also be used in case of the metals also even in case of the ceramic materials also. But it, when you apply the selective laser sintering operation for the metals usually we use the nickel, titanium, stainless steel most uh, developed uh, using the SLS process. But uh, in this case, it generally more energy compared to the polymer powder. Definitely, to sintering of the metallic powder, the more energy amount of the energy is required uh, by the laser as compared to the polymeric material. So, this energy requirement can be adjusted by the definitely by adjusting the parameters and the, such as laser power and the laser scanning speed. These are the two ways we can control the heat input per unit length to the uh, substrate material. So, when ceramics we can use the when the directly uh, sintering pure ceramic powder is sometimes difficult because this melting point is very very high in this case. So, therefore, the during fabrication of the we can use the handling the ceramic components we can use the some polymer bind, binder is mixed with the ceramic components and then we, we just to try to melt or sintering uh, this polymer component they will try to bind the ceramic particles. Uh, so, that is why it is known as the indirect selective laser sintering because directly we are not sintering performing the sintering operation to the ceramic particles rather than we are performing the the, the sintering uh, this melting the, the binder polymer. So, that polymer is helps to binding the ceramic particles. So, in this case once uh, this ceramic the sub polymer is some after that polymer is removed through a a uh, debinding uh, stage basically the polymer is removed through a debinding stage remaining polymer associated with this thing. So, this the way to handle the this uh, ceramic components. Now, selective laser melting. So, instead of the uh, sintering operation here we can perform the melting operation. So, here is the one type of the laser additive manufacturing uh, process the selective laser melting and the we follow the similar procedure here we can use the CO2 laser in Duag laser can be usually fiber laser can also be used and that is the, the this type of laser is better handles the this, this metallic powder. But working principle of this process is something like that we try to create a uniform layer of the powder to the substrate and then laser scans to the substrate the perform the operation for this particular layer then we go for the, the next layer the simply the fill for the next layer. So, we use the horizontal scraper to redistribute the powder to make it the uniform thickness throughout the, the bed and then uh, we go for the uh, next layer. So, selective melting is carried out and repeated in this manner until the that means we repeat the same phenomena for the each and every layer until, until the completion, uh, completion of the complete 3D product. So, SLM is practically well suited for the producing height of the complex internal cavity structure. So, therefore, if there is internal cavity structure, the selective laser melting is basically more appropriate and, uh, and it is also applicable for the more challenging materials. Uh, for example, the titanium and the high temperature alloy is handled using this selective laser melting operation. Main challenges is that we faced the selective laser sintering process. The some challenges, but that can be uh, address using the selective laser melting process. So, such as low density of the parts produced and the necessity for the post processing steps. So, low density uh, component which is produced using the this selective laser sintering operation. So, that can be removed using if we perform the uh, melting operation as compared to the this thing sintering process. Even sintering process must to follow some kind of the post processing of uh, post processing steps. So, that can be eliminated if we follow the selective laser melting operation.
So, here we can see that what it works. So, so, this is the laser scanning, this is the melting pool is created and then it see this it said keep on melting this uh, this layer of the this powder particles. So, here uh, the re-solidified metal and the melting pool is created and we can we can create the simply melt we can create the layer using this process. For example, this is first layer and this is second layer and we are performing the third layer. So, this way we can keep on layer by layer the melting the 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 uh, as per the scanning path and we can produce the the exact geometrical component what we are uh, looking for. So, in this case we see that more definitely this more energy is required as compared to the SLS process selective laser sintering process in this cases and uh, this uh, involved melting process can lead to the rough surface finish on the parts. So, of course, we need to perform some kind of the machining operation even for the less, uh, even if you follow the selective laser melting process. Now, one of the problem is the selective laser SLM process selective laser melting process the spherization and that is more common problem associated with the polymeric material. So, spherization of the boiling of the common defect is the SLM process. So, when we consider the powder materials melt in that cases the liquid pool often forms say the spherical shape and that de definitely the decrease because of the, the reduction of the surface tension in this case. So, they try to make a, the, a spherical ball walloping and of course, this spherical wall creates the obstacles for the melting uh, of the previous layer. So, this leads to the creation of the solid spherical or sometimes beak -like, bead like formation is usually associated with this thing and that creates some issues problem of the surface irregularities uh, in that cases the not proper mechanical strength is achieved and, and it is try to enhance further uh, spherization of this uh, of the um, during this process. So, therefore, this spherical entities is basically caused layer becomes more thicker thicker than what we are specified initially. So, therefore, it basically creates the problem for the application of the powder for the next layer. So, these are the problem in the associated with the selective laser melting process, but what are the factors they affect the this uh, this uh, particular problem the spherodization process. One is that the content of the oxygen. So, presence of the oxygen actually enhance the effect of the spherodization in this cases for example, 0 0.1 percent oxygen resulting in the minimal spherodization, but if it is 10 percent oxygen then severe spherodization is usually associated with this thing and, and it may create the some kind of the surface deformation is associated with this process while handling the powder. Now, other part is that when oxygen dissolves in the molten material pool then this actually forms the oxides and that actually have the lower surface tension than at, as compared to the pure metal. So, when the lower surface tension is there then it will try to tendency to create the this effect of the uh, spherodization. So, that is why content of the oxygen is one of the factor wh which we can control to avoid or which we can minimize to avoid the spherodization effect in case of the, the selective laser melting of the powder components. Then other parameters or factors associated with the spherodization effect is the scanning speed and the laser power. So, in this case the energy density is basically is depending upon the power over the powder material by the laser it depends what the scanning speed and the laser power we can utilize. So, we can have the energy density is basically uh, depends on two parameters one is the inverse relation and the, with this this energy density link with the inverse relationship with the sphere formation. So, energy density with the sphere formation having inverse relation. So, lower scan speeds combined with the very high laser power. So, when scanning speed is very low and laser power is high. So, basically energy density is much more or I can say that per unit length the energy heat input or energy input is much higher in this case. That produces the more uniform in the continuous melt and that actually reduces the spherodization effect. But on the other side the scanning speed is very high and with the low laser power. So, power by velocity if you see the it indicates the heat input per unit length. So, I think joule per millimeter or meter. So, heat input per unit length in, in case of high scan speed and the low laser power it is basically lower side. So, therefore, that actually try to create the spherodization more prone to create the spherodization effect associated with the process. Now, second part is the third part is that interlayer dwell time. So, what is the the 
the gap between the uh, the one layer to the another layer to formation so that is called the interlayer dual time or the distances between the successive scan path actually not having significant impact of the spherodization however the increasing the scan intervals can lead to the pore formation and affect the density of the component so we see that too much of scan interval they try to produce some kind of the pore formation then thickness of the layer so spherodization was reduced with the thinner powder layers so thinner powder layer because thicker layers is require more material to be melted and the increase the distance between the laser focus and the previous layer so that's why thicker uh, in this case thicker layers is basically more prone to occur the spherodization effect so therefore in this case spherodization can be reduced using the very thinner powder layers here we can see that uh, spherodization effect the slm process we see that the first layer of paving we see this is the powder is there and this is the laser scanning is there and we can see the layer thickness on the over the substrate so laser scanning when there is a layer thickness is there but there is a balling effect is there which is more usually bigger than that of the layer thickness so spherodization is happening in such way that it the size of the ball becomes much higher as compared to the layer thickness so this creates the problem over in this particular deposition you see the laser uh, in this case now secondary layer paving so for example when these balls are there so the scanning for the laser and the proper melting of the secondary layer is sometimes difficult uh, in this case because this spherical ball creates some problem uh, to non uniform melting of the the other layer the next layer so in this case so if is too much of uh, the spherodization is there we can see there is a gap so that will basically indicates the reflect the formation of the porosity defects associated with the the uh, this the uh, this spherodization effect in the selective laser melting process now there is another additive manufacturing process which is based on the electron beam uh, melting process so electron beam is the additive manufacturing process where electron beam is as a heat source so we need, we know that what are the electron beam works so there is a electrons are released from the filament of the electron gun so from the electron gun electrons are released and then application of the high voltage we can accelerate the flow of the electrons and then after that the high speed electron is basically generated and that is uh, we use the electromagnetic lens to deflect the electron uh, and the or the proper position so it follow beam and deflector is basically adjusted its trajectory and it is projected one particular location so here electromagnetic lens is very the beam of the electron is uh, directed to focus on particular position so here the position control of the electron beam is usually done now metal powder in this case selectively metal in a very controlled way using the uh, uh, electron beam and of course this usually the beam speed is very very high as compared to the laser so scanning speed of the electron beam is much higher as compared to the laser so therefore this creates the very rapidly the melting of the powder is possible using the electron beam now electron beam based additive manufacturing process is the wide range of the components for example the blends receivers radiator different supports lifting logs and the other any complicated structure even aerospace components in that can be and the manufacture using the electron beam uh, melting process now here we see there is a magnetic deflection coil also and which is generates a varying magnetic field so magnetic deflection coil is useful here the electron beam to scan the powder one particular uh, position that we have already discussed so the electron beam can swiftly preheat the powder bed scan and preheat the powder bed and raising its temperature uniformly more uniformly may be close to the 700 degree centigrade so therefore by using this thing that uh, can swiftly preheat so when there is a electron beam is try to produce a more uniform heat over the powder bed so that actually helps to reduce the thermal stress contents are reduced and therefore wrapping residual stress generation deformation is possible to to larger extent to avoid in case of the electron beam additive manufacturing process here the see the how it works we can see the electron beam uh, melting process so filament they simply produce the electrons and then creates the electron beam column then electron beam is there we applying the high voltage we can uh, accelerate the electron beam the flow of the electron beam and then we use uh, different types of the lens here 
and that should direct the electron beam some focus uh, focus and uh, sometimes uh, we can use the uh, focusing lens one is that that uh, focusing lens uh, that focus the electron beam and other we use the magnetic field to deflect the beam also one desired position and here see that this is a powder hopper is the powder is there the source of the powder is here and then heat seal also we can use the this act as a heat seal so powder is basically comes from here and the electron beam is basically melt the powder and create the uh, component but here is the vacuum chamber everything and this is the just to building up of the one layer is perform and then before next layer is the shifting of the upward direction in the another layer thickness so this way it controls the electron beam additive manufacturing process now there is another process we use uh, binder jetting technology and this is mainly applicable for the uh, uh, creating components by powder particles and probably it is mostly applicable for the uh, non metallic material but of course we can use the similar approach for the metallic metal as well also so working principle of the binder jetting is that similar to selective laser sintering operation but in this case uh, we use in the the glue as a binding agent apply uh, for the powder and this acts as a binding agent of the powder particles so here once after one layer is bonded the printing platform is lowers equivalent to the one layer thickness and then horizontal rollers are again flattens at the new layer of the powder then we project the uh, this thing, the glue and that glue is basically bonded the layer so in this case we see that after all the layers the bonded and processing is done the excess unbonded powder is basically removed and we can reuse also but during this process the excess unbonded powder acts as a support structure for this component so here you see that it's a roller is there nozzle is there binder material is there because the binder material is the glue here that's why it is called the binder jetting technology so if the fill the here the we fill one layer and this thing binder material is ejected there and that that actually bind as per the canning the the path we design uh, the path is basically designed based on the size of the geometric size of the uh, component so this way this instead of here melting or sintering we use the simply the one the binder element just to bind the powder particles so here empirical relations can be described the degree of the powder diffusion the degree of deformation is something like that we use the uh, here uh, see hf all the parameters are given so depends on the this particle diameter distortion angle thickness of the glue value blade width height of the second layer and height of the a printed layer thickness all 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 can all is the uh, parameter here uh, in in this case and we can perform uh, this uh, hf the layer thickness this is okay so this way we can we can calculate the this uh, different uh, degree of degree of polymer diffusion on the degree of deformation uh, to the workpiece can be calculated using this empirical relation now binder jetting process there is another process this is called high speed sintering uh, operation which is the high speed sintering operation is basically two different injection steps to create the parts here the first step is primarily manages the packaging and the production of the printed material so first just to hold and all this thing the the which is known as the packaging and the production of the printing material where the second step is basically some kind of the spraying coloring or bonding is happened in the in into the this uh, second layer uh, this uh, the second injection step so that is the known as the high speed sintering because two injection steps we are considering working principle the high speed uh, sintering of principle involves the initially the laying down of the layer of the needed material so we just use the laying down of the uh, materials this first is the material powder and then converting in with the radiation absorbing material coating in the desired object shape so we can perform the radiation absorbing material coating uh, in, in this particular case so after that entire workpiece is heated and then infrared source are exposed and in this case the radiation absorbing material absorb the energy compared to the non coated areas we can see that uh, this, this is first we make a coating also the link and then we supply the energy that uh, infrared source also which causes the powder to sinter so here basically we first make a 
simple coating just binding the powders in the coating, but then we apply the another energy source here just to uh, uh, this uh, sintering to perform then it becomes the solid bonding of the particles is usually occur after the sintering operation. So, then we get the uh, finished component is like that. So, we see that this is the steps usually associated with the high speed sintering operation. Now, powder based materials we can use the metallic powders, we can use the polymer and composite powders, we can use the ceramic powders all options are there in the powder based additive manufacturing processes and uh, we see metallic powder, we see the metallic powder is the basically raw materials the high quality metal components we can utilize in additive manufacturing. For example, this metallic powder is applicable in, in case of the selective laser sintering operation, electron beam melting operation and the binder jetting operation also. The material handles the titanium, aluminum, stainless steel, high temperature alloy and the magnesium alloy or type of the alloy can be handled using the, um, the, uh, the metallic powder components. But quality of the metal molded components depends on the, the type of the raw powder. For example, the particle size and distribution is another parameter. So, what particle size and uh, uh, what can be the distribution of the particle size. So, that is important parameter to decide the what can be the laser power and what can be the laser scanning speed. But metal powders of course, another property should have good fluidity and the particle size needs to be controlled within the specific range because this particle size decide what is the laser power and scanning speed is required in this in this particular case. So, that is having some in, in influence for the binding of the particles with the application of the laser energy. For example, usually 3D printing uh, uh, powders the particle size range can be it can be 15 to 53 micrometer for the selective laser melting process. It can be 53 to 105 micrometer or 53 to 150 micrometer for the electron beam melting operation or binder jetting processes. So, we can see that different variants of the powder particles is suitable for the different types of the these the laser based additive manufacturing processes. Now, different types of the powder based materials we can uh, compare uh, the powder uh, metallic powder utilized for the 3D printing process. We see the uh, metal type is there and the different alloy and the and its grade and what is the application. So, we see the iron and steel materials we can use the in this case is the in this particular type of the metal we can use the stainless steel different gears of the stainless steel, tool steel and the mold steel we can utilize. But in this case application we can find out the medical equipment, precision tooling, forming mold and industrial parts development all these cases we can find out the application of the iron and steel materials. If you look in the nickel based super alloy we usually use the super alloy in conel 625 and 718. These are the two materials the additive manufacturing process uh, for the powder has been developed. So, this material is having application for the oxygen uh, turbine, aerospace parts and the chemical parts also. Even if you look into the titanium, titanium based alloy also we can use the titanium metal CPT, titanium alloy the um, grade uh, prep um, in the typical grade TI6AL4B alloy, the is a medical grade alloy, uh, TI aluminum alloy and titanium nickel alloy. So, all this particular combination of materials this additive manufacturing dependent additive manufacturing process is applicable 3D printing is applica applicable. Here we use this in case of the heat exchanger medical implant chemical parts and aerospace parts to develop uh, for this particular using this material. Now cobalt based alloy cobalt based alloy is the different gates of the cobalt based alloy super alloy also but here you can get the cobalt based alloy mainly application in the dental crown orthopedic implant aerospace parts you can find out the application of the cobalt based alloy even for the aluminum alloy mainly the aluminum silicon magnesium alloy 6061 it is basically bicycle and aerospace parts manufacturing we can use the application of the aluminum alloy. Copper alloy you can use the bronze the copper tin alloy copper magnesium nickel alloy that finding the application in case of the forming molds and the marine parts we can use uh, this type of the uh, alloy. Now different Preparation methods for the metallic powder we, we see what are the way we can prepare the metallic powder there are different ways one is the mechanical processes also there and physical chemical process also there. But among the mechanical process we use the different atomization techniques to, to create the this metallic powder. But in this case we use the 
what atomization, gas atomization, plasma atomization and the plasma electrode rotating process. These are the typical methods, uh, mechanical methods to produce the powder particles. But in case of the physical chemical process, we use the electrolysis can be used the plasma spheroidization and hydride, dehydride method uh, can be utilized uh, to produce the powders that is the in case of the this associated with the physical chemical process. But here I will try to discuss in the, the most conventionally use the this uh, manufacturing of the powders, but not all the methods I am not supposed to discuss in, in this particular case. So, here if you see the powder production following the atomization process, we can use the gas and water atomization process, we can use the centrifugal atomization in the spinning disc. So, all 80 percent of the commercial powder is produced by the melt atomization process. So, a melt atomization process means the here the liquid metal is there, we can create the, uh, the collect the liquid metal over the ladle and the pour the liquid metal through the uh, turn disc and then we use the atomizing gas or water supply, we can use the either atomizing gas supply or water supply just to from the liquid metal to the uh, metal particles can be formed in this case. So, here metal liquid material is basically fragmented into the small droplets and that actually very quickly to allow the cool and then when it is try to allow the cool it is try to form the uh, particles. Now, injecting liquid metal is basically passes through a small orifice and the steam is broken up by a jet of the high pressure gas. You, you can see the uh, with the gas atomization also we can use the in case of the gas atomization with the high pressurized gas to flow in, interact with the liquid metal. So, this gas can be nitrogen gas, it can be argon or helium gas which is having non-reactive to the uh, to the even for the at high temperature or even water can be utilized in this case water stream can also be utilized to get the atomization of the uh, liquid metal. So, here water allows the more rapid cooling definitely as compared to the high. So, higher production is possible in when we try to use the raw metal in the form of the water. But gas atomization normally leads to the, the spherical shape of the uh, particles, but water atomization we can the irregular shape of the particles can be produced, but usually gas atom, as atomization will try to produce the lead to the uh, spherical particles. So, in case of the centrifugal atomization process, we can see the molten metal is basically the centrifugal atomization with the spinning disc with the liquid metal and with the through the turn disc we can pass the liquid metal and that liquid metal is put through over uh, uh, this thing spinning disc. So, when spinning disc rotated with a very high speed, <coughs> the liquid metal is uh, basically interacting with the spinning disc. So, liquid metal is basically converted to the particles because of the centrifugal action uh, of the, the, the spinning disc. So, it is called as the centrifugal atomization uh, with the spinning disc. So, in this case, the molten metal is fall rapidly rotating disc and the centrifugal force is broke into the stream of the smaller particles. Now, these are the centrifugal atomization. Now, we can use the another process that is atomization with the rotating consumable electrode. So, this is another more common method to produce the, the powder particles. In this case, uh, the consumable electrode we can use the, the non-rotating tungsten electrode, we can see this one and this is the consumable electrode. So, rotating consumable electrode. In this case, with the, which is supported by the spindle here and here we can use the, uh, the, uh, the creating of the this between the non-rotating tungsten electrode and rotating tungsten electrode. Uh, in this case, uh, high rotational speed and against the electric arc generated by the tungsten electrode. So, tungsten electrode create the electric arc and that electric arc try to melt the rotating consumable electrode and when it is rotating with the high speed. In that case, the metal powder is basically created and it is the collected at the bottom of the metal powder, but this happens inside a inert gas chamber or we can use the vacuum chamber also to perform this operation. So, here centrifugal force is basically cause the molten droplets to fly from the surface to the outward periphery and it is basically freeze with the presence of the inert gas in, in this case. So, usually uniform particle size can be formed and the size can be varied by changing the speed of the rotation. So, with the very usually it is a very high rotational speed the particles can be uniform, but if you change the, the rotational speed then particles can vary from one size to another size. But 
all these cases this is the uh, there is a in gas atomization method what happens the molten metal flows through a ceramic clandis before being directed into the atomization stream. So, that we have already observed in the gas atomization process in this case it is passes through the this this tundis ok uh, and through which the liquid metal is poured into the chamber, but that actually can result in the contamination of the metal. So, during this when, when the staying there in the tundis, so it creates the contamination of the metal uh, in transport and it reacts with the ceramic surface of the tundis that is that possibilities is there as because this is a liquid metal the holding by the ceramic tundis. So, it may react with the tundis. So, therefore, this part in this cases we can further develop the process in such a that these processes that do not require any kind of the tundis develop. One such method is the vacuum induction melting gas atomization. So, in this case is the vacuum induction melting gas atomization. So, we use the gas atomization technique, but the raw materials is basically the using the follow the vacuum induction system to melt the raw material and then directly we follow the, the stream of the gas to directly focusing on the this uh, melted material and we can perform the produce the, the different powder particles. So, here uh, feed material and induction and then atomizes it using the inert gas environment. So, this way these powders can be can also be produced, metallic powders can also be produced. Now, I come to this part, this is the functional parts by additive manufacturing process. Here you can see that this uh, functional parts means that uh, the specific tux is usually designed using the any functional components uh, depending upon the applications and open required. So, basically come precise mechanical, thermal and electrical properties can be imported in this functional component. So, therefore, we use this functional components, this additive manufacturing process, why when it required for the uh, functional parts, maybe we try to understand what the importance of the functional parts is that. So, because complex geometries can be produced because complex geometries ability to manufacture very complex, lightweight, optimized structures, uh, lighter structure and optimized structures not possible with the conventional method. So, we can there uh, we can find out the use of the additive manufacturing to produce the functional components because optimized structure is not possible uh, using the this uh, conventional methods. Another is the customization depending on the demand of the customized company, the industry like the healthcare and the aerospace industry, the customized product can be produced using this, uh, the additive manufacturing process. Other is the rapid production, the seamless transition from the design to the production for the functional finally end user because we, we already mentioned that this additive manufacturing process is actually eliminate the use of the so many numbers of the conventional uh, manufacturing processes. So, the single process can produce the, the end product uh, using this thing. So, and this is also uh, known as the rapid prototyping or rapid production that very rapidly the these components can be produced. Apart is the material efficiency. So, minimum wastage of the material to perform with the final product. So, therefore, we eliminate the any subtractive methods, uh, subtracting manufacturing process. I mean the we can eliminate the effect of the machining operation, the heavy machining operation associated with this uh, component. So, that is why is the material in terms of the material efficiency that the manufacturing process is the more efficient. But key challenges in the manufacturing of the functional parts is that that material properties is one this thing ensuring the mechanical properties the strength fatigue resistance are comparable to the traditional manufacturing parts. One is that we have to add in manufacturing we adding the material, but it has to ensure the strength is properly achieved or function fatigue resistance is sufficient uh, as compared to the conventional manufacturing process. This is the main challenge associated with the additive manufacturing component. Then dimensional accuracy. So, maintaining the high tolerance during the printing process has to be looked into. So, even if we apply the printing technology, this, this high accuracy can also be maintained, dimensional accuracy. Third is the post processing requirement. So, this need of the extensive post processing like heat treatment, surface finish and the machining operation is basically associated with this, this additive manufacturing uh, process. This is one, uh, one of the challenges to perform the, the so many of post processing um, techniques associated with the additive manufacturing process. Apart from this thing there is a thermal management and the residual stress. So, 
usually the additive manufacturing process for the metallic components is the cooling rate usually uh, high in this case. So, there is a chances to produce the high temperature gradient. So, when it is produced high temperature gradient, special gradient, that will try to create the large amount of the residual stress and is this actually lead to the formation of some dimensional inaccuracy of the, the very precise component. So, therefore, that is another challenge how to reduce the residual stress associated with the additive manufacturing uh, component. Now, thermal cycling which is managing repeated heating and cooling cycle to avoid the defects in the in the microstructure that also is another concern associated with the additive manufacturing component. Now, fabrication methodology for the functional parts. So, functional parts can be fabricated using the powder bed fusion or it can be uh, using even for the fuse deposition modeling uh, process also. But when you try to perform the powder bed fusion here, we can use the selective laser sintering operations or direct metal laser sintering both can be utilized uh, in this uh, to produce the functional parts associated with the powder bed fusion. Here fine layer deposition of the metallic powders followed by the laser sintering or melting that we have already mentioned this thing and when you try to make the functional parts also we can supply the material in such a way that one layer for the one metal second layer may be another metal or we can make the variation of the uh, this the density by changing the material also. So, this way we can produce the functional, but approach is the same what we can for follow the selective laser melting uh, selective laser sintering process. High precision complex metal parts can be produced using this powder bed fusion process and the process overview is the preheating is there, then laser scanning, then material consolidation these are the basic steps associated with the this uh, fabrication of the functional parts using the powder bed fusion process. Then fabrication of the methodology for the fuse deposition modeling when you use the in this case mostly the fuse deposition modeling is basically mostly applicable for the polymeric material. So, this is well established process. So, we can use the thermoplastic filament. Filament in the form of a wire you can utilize to build the layer by layer part and commonly used for the functional prototypes and the tooling we can use the fuse deposition model. We can use the multiple wire also of the different wire also we can impart these functional properties we can impart the different color in the for the polymeric material using the fuse deposition uh, modeling process. Now, even electron beam melting can also be utilized for that to produce the functional parts, but here we see that the metal powder is basically melted layer by layer using the electron beam and we use the high performance applications for example, aerospace medical implants even the material titanium and inconel can be handled using this but electron beam melting operation because titanium and uh, inconel is this more problematic material because titanium has high affinity to form the oxides and inconel uh, material is basically try to form the formation of the, the internal the micro cracking uh, this process during the melting process. So, that is why this electron melting is better handled by this typical material for example, titanium alloy and inconel. Advantage higher build speed fewer residual stress components or to as compared to the laser wave method is possible using the electron beam melting operation. So, it is a actually relative advantages associated with the electron beam as compared to the laser beam processes. Now, post processing of the additive manufacturing functional parts here we see the relieve the to release the residual stress develop to we can perform the heat treatment operations and that actually uh, removes the uh, mechan uh, improves the mechanical properties that usually the post process heat treatment process is basically uh, try to release the residual stress uh, enhance the ductility but strength uh, can be little bit reduced surface finish canals we can perform the mechanical polishing uh, polishing or chemical treatment to bring the smooth surface appearance of the functional component dimensional analysis uh, adjustment can be done using the machining operation. Now, future of the functional parts by additive manufacturing we can say that that uh, there are development materials innovation development of the new alloy and composite materials for the improved performance. There is a lots of scope to improve the different kind of the alloy system by mixing the multi materials also and of course, we can use the several variants of the composite materials is more easier to manufacture using simply the additive manufacturing technology. So, that is why there this is scope of the development of the uh, different alloy system, new alloy system, there is a development of different types of the composite material by following the additive manufacturing processes. 
Now, process automation is another in situ monitoring and the AI driven design enhanced past quality uh, part quality can be possible using the uh, this additive uh, the 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 when you try to automate this system because additive manufacturing itself is the automated system but we can further enhance the automation we can some just look into the in the in situ in situ monitoring of the process or we can analyze the you know, some kind of the um, artificial integer based data we can improve the uh, automation capability for the additive manufacturing process now i'll try to discuss about one case study associated with the the this uh, additive manufacturing process so here the case study in the aerospace turbo machinery components using the titanium alloy we when you try to manufacture aerospace tar, uh, the components aerospace turbo, uh, turbo machinery component using the uh, titanium alloy we can state that start with the application because this particular titanium alloy is applicable for the aerospace turbo machinery component such as compressor blade can be manufactured using the titanium alloy turbine vanes uh, are basically manufacture uh, this thing but this particular material or this particular component is applicable uh, the with the extreme temperature high under high stress and of course at the same times it should have lightweight and the it should have the durability of the material should be high so with this perspective the looking into the applications we have to look into how additive manufacturing is effective uh, to get uh, to manufacture this compressor blades and turbines for the uh, turbo machinery component. So, material we already chosen the material is the titanium alloy because the strength and weight dress is very good in this cases or having corrosion resistance and at the same time having the ability to work even for the at high temperature or maybe retain hardness even at the elevated temperature. But fabrication methodology you can see the direct metal uh, sintering can be utilized, electron beam melting, these are the two metals in these cases can be employed for producing the titanium alloy parts. Okay. So, this we are assuming these two metal, these two processes are followed to manufacture this component. But we, the, if, when you are talking about the process we followed uh, to manufacture these two components using the additive manufacturing process, one is the first we start with the CAD design of the component. Then we can perform the topology optimization to try to reduce the weight while maintaining the strength. So that we can see that CAD design of the component and topology optimization of the, to reduce the weight with maintaining the strength that is the usual part associated with the any kind of the additive manufacturing component. Then we go for that layer by layer deposition process because here titanium powder is basically melted layer by layer to form the, the complex geometries in this particular case. Once it is done, then we go for the post processing heat treatment to perform to relieve the residual stress and to improve the mechanical properties and followed by the surface finish. Once we improve the mechanical properties, internal properties improve, then we go for the surface finish to exactly the as per the design get the particular shape of the component or to, get, to meet the demand of the dimensional accuracy of this component. Now, once we perform these processes to different process, now we will try to look into the what are the scientific results we got it, these two components manufactured by the two different methodologies. So, when you analyze the mechanical, the performance or mechanical characterization, we can see the tensile strength, parts manufacturing using the uh, direct metal laser sintering exhibited the tensile strength between 900 to 950 mega Pascal. So in this case, tensile strength is there. Comparable or to or exceeding the traditionally manufacturing titanium component. So basically, if we comp comp the traditionally manufacturing process we follow, in this case, we can achieve the very high tensile strength, 900 to 950 mega Pascal. Second is the fatigue resistance. So we perform the post-processing fatigue strength is actually improved and it is a making part suitable for the high stress environment like the jet engine. So we tested this thing the the oh, fatigue performance of the component and even it is subjected to the high stress environment is able to sustain and this particular component so basically we need to measure the mechanical performance in terms of the fatigue resistance in this case then we measure the weight reduction also so topology optimization allowed a weight reduction up to 30 to 40 percent while maintaining the same structural integrity and leading to the better fuel efficiency because when you try to 
weight reduction definitely we can expect the fuel efficiency will be higher. So, in this case weight reduction through topology optimization is possible to achieve around 30 to 40 percent. Then we try to analyze the microstructural properties also uh, for the acceptability of this additive manufacture component. So, grain structure the parts produced by the electron beam melting process in this cases we can expect the very fine grain structure and the critical area. So, the critical area very fine grain structure is possible to achieve. So, here we see the electron beam melting is basically the can improve the microstructure of the component which enhance the fatigue resistance and the creep properties under high temperature operation. So, basically very microstructure is the proper that means very fine grain microstructure helps to improve the uh, fatigue properties and the we can creep properties also and which is more suitable or important for the high temperature application. But if you look into the residual stress also even after heat treatment the residual stress are, are significantly reduced to so, residual stress heat treatment the reduce and the minimizing the wrapping and the improving the dimensional accuracy. So, here after the heat treatment by uh, this thing the residual stress is improved that means residual stress is basically lower and that, that actually other way influencing the, the minimum wrapping of the components and the try to improve the dimensional accuracy of the components. So, this kind of the, the behavior or achievement is possible using the additive manufacturing process and of course, here in this point we compare with the conventional manufacturing process the strength is very good, we get the minimum residual stress very fine structure. So, that is why this we see that that these two this electron beam and direct metal laser sintering operation these are can be utilized for this uh, the titanium aerospace components associated uh, using the titanium alloy which might not be possible to achieve the uh, or combination of the all properties not possible to achieve using the conventional manufacturing process. The most important is that even uh, this topology optimization uh, we, if we perform we it possible to save the weight 30 to 40 percent, but this topology optimization the this accommodation to produce the desired shape of the component is only possible the more flexible to uh, using the additive manufacturing process because if you try to perform the this one particular design of the topology the structural design is the using the conventional method is difficult we need the much more time to perform as per the uh, or following the any kind of the conventional manufacturing process. So, here we can get the advantage of the additive manufacturing processes. I think that is all. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention.